If you're serious about surviving in a grid down world, you need to avoid these three mistakes. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping families set their house up to be able to survive a loss of the electric grid. You know, one of the things I always say is that when you're planning to be able to run your home off the grid or a portion of your home off the grid, you always want a way that you can do your heating related activities with something other than electricity. Unfortunately, in many cases, the home appliances have already been chosen before the plan to set up for off the grid takes place. So today I'm gonna to be walking you through some of the top three mistakes that homeowners make or some of the top three challenges that we have to overcome when implementing a successful off the grid plan. Uh, the three mistakes are actually all related to the one main mistake of using electricity for your heating as opposed to taking advantage of alternate fuel sources. The first one pictured here is an electric stove. You know, a lot of times, especially folks that are building new homes, uh, the builder will by default uh, select all electric appliances, meaning electric stove, electric water heater, electric heat pump, HVAC system. And in many cases, it's, it's easier and cleaner to build that way because you only have to worry about electrical wiring. You don't have to worry about separate plumbing for gas lines and so forth. But the problem with all electric appliances is that if you end up in a grid down mode, some of these electric appliances are a very, very high draw, meaning that in some cases they may not work at all, or if you choose to use them, you may have to compromise having electricity in other parts of the house uh, if, you're, if you're running on your solar and battery system alone. And so the electric stove and electric oven are one of those, one of those areas that we generally recommend that you avoid. Um, one easy way to get around this is to use propane or natural gas for your cooktop and if possible for your oven as well. Now I know a lot of people don't like the, the hassle or, or, or the, the perceived danger of using gas for your oven, but if that's the case, you can always get a, a desktop plug-in toaster oven or a roasting oven. So if you absolutely have to bake or have to roast something, uh, you can use it with a, an appliance that plugs into a standard 120 volt wall outlet instead of using a traditional electric element oven like this unit here. Uh, a unit like this is, is typically going to be connected uh, on a 50 amp circuit, which may or may not even be allowed to be connected uh, to a renewable energy system, depending on what equipment uh, you're using. So again, always great to have alternate means of heating and cooking. If you can use the alternate fuel, use that first as opposed to going all electric. Next on the list is the electric on-demand water heater, or sometimes they're called uh, electric tankless water heater. Now you have to be careful here because these tankless water heating units typically are, are advertised as higher efficiency. And that could lead you to believe that they actually consume less electrical power than a traditional electric water heater. But that's, that's not the case. With a tankless architecture, the efficiency comes from the fact that the water is not heated until it's demanded. Meaning until you turn the faucet on, you turn the bathtub on, th there's no hot water demand, then the, the, the unit itself is not going to be powered or, or drawing any power at all. However, because this is an instant on-demand heating system, as soon as you turn that faucet on, the heating element in this, in many cases, can be triple the size of the heating element in your oven. And the reason for that is because it has to heat the water instantly as it's being demanded from the consumer. So although it uses less overall energy, if you look at, let's say, the, your electric bill over the course of the month, you, 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 you use less total energy because you don't have to keep a tank heated and ready all the time. But the instantaneous power measured in watts or kilowatts, when you turn that unit on, uh, you could be looking at consumption anywhere from 15 to 30 kilowatts, which in most cases, uh, an off-grid renewable energy system is not going to be able to handle that at all. So a nice alternative is, again, using an, an alternate fuel like propane or natural gas, you can use a tankless gas uh, on-demand water heater, which we actually talk about uh, in one of our other videos, which I'll link in the comments or the description uh, below. And then finally is making use of electric space heaters. You know, typically when we set up the home to be able to run off the grid or run portions of the home off the grid, uh, oftentimes we will not connect your electric heat pump to the backup power system 
And we actually explained why in one of our previous videos. And it's because an electric heat pump is a very heavy electrical draw uh, you're, if you're running a, a full-size heat pump compressor. Um, the other reason is because most of that draw is coming at nighttime where there's no solar energy coming in, meaning that all of that draw is coming off of the stored energy in your battery. And if you have a very cold night and that heat pump is working too hard, you could drain your batteries out completely and be in a complete blackout until the sun comes up the next time. Now, what many people will do as kind of a workaround to that is attempt to use one or multiple electric space heaters instead. Um, after all, if your, let's say your master bedroom or your living room outlets are on the backup power system, there's nothing physically to stop you from getting a space heater and plugging it into those outlets. However, the, the heating element, and these, these units here, they typically draw about 1500 watts per unit. And that heating element, pulling that draw overnight, you still end up in the same situation as trying to run a central heat pump, which is you're pulling too much energy out of your batteries at nighttime, trying to run one or many of these um, electric uh, heating elements. And uh, in many cases, you may end up draining your batteries out completely and, and blacking out until the sun comes up the next day. So as an alternative, I would always recommend an alternate fuel like gas, pellet stove, uh, wood stove, anything that you can burn, burn an alternate fuel to, to produce the heat as opposed to having to fire an electric heating element. Uh, it's not so much a problem to use electricity to blow hot air around. So running a, uh, an air handler or running a circulating fan that's, let's say, built into a wood stove. You know, that's, that's typically a very, very low draw just to circulate the air around and, and, and heat up a, a wider area in the house. But you always want to avoid uh, traditional electric heating element based heaters like this unit here. Well, folks, as always, if you have any questions or feedback about the information that we present here, go ahead and post it in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you to answers to your questions. Of course, if you find the information on this channel valuable, be sure to go ahead and share this link. And if you haven't already done so, click, click on that like and subscribe button. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.